multiple organ failure. This presentation was, uh, I was held by Dr. Sanjay Akangai, who is now a neonatologist in Kansas State. And myself, we are from the Department of Pediatrics, Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, Amarillo, Texas. So um, we have nothing to disclose. And uh, I, I give you the background of this talk. We will uh, say something about neonatal sepsis, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, that is SIRS, multiple organ dysfunction, and MODS, and um, multiple organ system failure, that is MSOF, morbidity and mortality increases as MSO develops. SIRS, MODS, MSR have been widely studied in medical and surgical literature, but there is paucity of the information in pediatric and neonatal population. So uh, we will go, we'll go with few of the definitions which have been um, narrated by Dr. Huck and Dr. Junaid, and uh, we will talk about uh, uh, sepsis, bacteremia, and cons constellation of symptoms and signs caused by microorganisms and toxins in circulation released by the microorganism. And um, sepsis in neonates is early and late. Early on so sepsis, as described by Dr. Huck, is after the 72 hours of birth till uh, one week of life and then late onset sepsis it can extend up to about three months of life. And so this is the introduction. So in statistics, about 20% of the neonatal deaths are due to sepsis in Asia and Africa. Incidence of neonatal sepsis in developed countries is much less now even half to one per thousand live births due to the interventions being done and availability. Um, incidence of sepsis in Pakistan in my previous um, uh, research was about 10 to 30 per thousand live births and it has been talked by um, previous speakers, uh, Dr. Janay and Dr. Huck, and this is due to why it is so high? It is due to the lack of the prenatal care. Immediately, many of the baby parents live far off and overcrowding in the nurseries, lack of staff and lack of facilities for hand hygiene and not awareness of hand hygiene and use of multiple antibiotics used for much longer period of time and using the, mm, the Hi, uh, on we got uh, the and the and the top guns. A significant control is a, a significant contributor to perinatal mortality, along with asphyxia and prematurity. Okay. Okay, then neonatal sepsis, group B streptococcal sepsis is one of the most common organisms in neonatal sepsis in developed nations. However, gram negative organisms such as E. coli, Klebsiella is the most prevalent organism for neonatal sepsis in developing countries, even including Pakistan. And this was also discussed by you know, Dr. Huck and Dr. Janaid Khan. So my objectives today is historical perspective, definitions of SIRS, MSOF, MODS, pathophysiology, clinical presentation and diagnosis, treatment, SIRS of uh, MOSF and, and, and NICU Northwest Texas Hospital. We did a small study and we will talk about that and future directions. Okay, historically, um, some of you would know uh, that we were told uh, that the babies in the nursery, when they get sick, uh, they and they have sclerema, hardened edema, um, uh, edema, 
and that was uh, related with very high mortality. And this was due to um, probably sepsis and the cells response, even sometimes negative uh, blood cultures. Um, so this was clearly in Toronto. We were always told by our seniors during our training and that this is a bad condition and you know, associated with very high mortality. And this was uh, the SERS, mm, mm, MODS, MSOF, and ARDS. These were described in the year 1970. In World War I in 1920, there was a acute uh, uh, blood loss and irreversible wound shock and death. And that was also caused um, uh, multiple organ failure. In World War II, 1940, shock was recognized and was treatment treated with blood transfusion. And then many lives were sa saved, but casualty due to late renal failure was there because that did happen. In the Korean War in 1960, renal failure suspected early and was prevented by the treatment of shock with crystalloids and colloid therapy. And, and that was during the in 1960. In 1970, in the Vietnam War era, cause of death was due to respiratory failure in patients suffering from blood loss, crush injuries, and burns. A new term was that time introduced, ARDS, or the ARDS. ARDS and, and, and ARDS in the full term newborn was described in 1981 from Ann Arbor by Dr. Roger Fax. And SIRS plus MARS plus MSF in pediatrics uh, was really studied very much in Dallas uh, by Dr. Jordan McCracken. He was a very experienced uh, uh, infectious disease specialist. And this was described in 1994. Uh, then. Nurses also played a very important role, and, um, and Carol uh, Botwinski was an RN, and in 2001, she, uh, she described those changes in patients in the NICU at St. Petersburg, Florida. And Go Dr. Gorstein also described these uh, uh, in newborns, um, SIRS at Children's Hospital in Dallas in 2005. Okay, um, um, then we are uh, talking about uh, still historical perspective, multiple system organ failure in urinary patients and sepsis. Uh, uh, this was now in neonatal patients. This was first described by Samuel Smith and Mark Rowe for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1991. And Dr. Ali Abangulu uh, from Turkey, Izmir, Turkey, also described neonatal cells um, in 1996. Uh, Dr. Trevor Duke in 1997 from Melbourne, Australia, also described. And uh, myself and um, my, um, one of our resident, Dr. Akan Gayer, we looked at the cells and MSOF in our hospital and describe that and we'll talk a little bit about the, these presentations. So uh, adult definitions of SERS infection, microbial phenomenon, and after that inflammatory response to the presence of microorganism and release of endotoxins. Bacteremia is the presence of viable bacteria in the blood. As uh, Dr. Huck had mentioned before, sometimes we have signs symptoms of uh, uh, infection, but the blood culture is negative, and this is due to that uh, inflammatory response in the presence of microorganism, but the blood culture was was negative. Bacteremia, and we see presence of viable bacteria in the blood and sign symptoms of SIRS. Um, SIRS, um, what are the etiologies of SIRS response? Number one is sepsis. It could be due to immunological conditions, could be due to endocrinological conditions, 
could be due to trauma, burns, surgery, and hypoxia, and asphyxia, and shock. That's why many times the blood culture would be negative in these babies. Uh, clinical manifestations and markers of SIRS, this is the adult description. Uh, there is temperature elevation or temperature uh, going down. So it, either hyperthermia, hyperthermia is more common, and hypothermia is also an association. Heart rate, um, uh, increased heart rate, about 90 beats per minute, respiratory rate, 20 uh, breaths per minute or more, and PAO2 drops down less than 32. WBC count, uh, um, WBC could be elevated more than 12,000, or less than 4,000, and with bandemia, uh, up to 20% or even higher. Two or more of these above um, findings should be present in the adult population to be called as SIRS. Okay, and now we come on um, still in the adult SIRS, uh, severe sepsis, organ dysfunction, hyperperfusion and hypotension, lactic acidosis and oliguria leading to altered mental status. Lactic acid is now one of the, the measurements which we have to do when we are dealing with babies with sepsis. Uh, septic shock, what is septic shock in adults? Hypertension despite fluid resuscitation. This kind of septic shock does not respond to fluid therapy. There could be perf persistent hyperperfusion, and we talked about the signs of prolonged capillary refill time, lactic acidosis, oliguria, acute alteration in mental status, ionotropic Therapy may improve hypertension, but not hypoperfusion. Uh, high SIRS in adults, uh, hypertension. Your systolic blood pressure less than 90 and um, systolic blood pressure less than the 15th percentile from uh, fifth percentile from the norm. Reduction uh, of 40 millimeter from baseline uh, in the absence of other causes of hypertension. These are reported from American College of Chest Physicians and Society of Critical Care medicine, and it was led by chairman, Dr. Roger um, um, C. Bone, and um, he did a lot of this information. Multiple organ dysfunction still in the adult population, presence of altered organ function, inability of maintenance of homeostasis without intervention. And this was reported by Dr. Dietz from Shreveport, Louisiana. Now criteria for uh, dysfunction and failure in adults, and we we'll go organ by organ. And so uh, organ or system, dysfunction, uh, multiple organ dysfunction, and, and that is NORS, and advanced failure, MSOF. In the pulmonary system, we have hypoxia and requiring ventilation for three to five days. These are the criteria which they are put on. The progressive ARDS, uh, babies, uh, the, these uh, patients may require P greater than 10, and the end of oxygen, uh, FiO2 of 0.5. At the hepatic level, uh, below the good increase to 2 to 3 milligrams per dm, liver function tests become twice the baseline. And also in the advanced failure, jaundice with bilirubin going up 8 to 10 milligram per dm. Again, there will be oliguria and um, less than um, four, 479 ml per 24 hours and rising creatinine. Then in the final stages, there is renal failure and need for dial dialysis in the GI system. There is illness, uh, abdominal distension, feeding intolerance, which lasts for more than five days. They can also develop stress ulcers requiring blood transfusion, um, and they can also develop cholecystitis and acalculus.
in the hematological system, uh, PT and P PT and PTT increased by 25%, and the platelets dropping down even less than 50,000. And in the advanced stages, uh, it develops uh, in DIC, and it was also discussed by the previous speakers uh, two weeks ago. In the CNS system, there is confusion and disorientation, which may lead to progressive coma, and then cardiovascular system, there is decreased ejection fraction or capillary leakage syndrome. We used to see babies with edema all over, and this was the capillary leakage syndrome and a hypodynamic response refractory to inotropic support. And so um, refractory to inotropic support, and this. And cardiovascular system is the last system to fail. And that was usually the cause of death in these uh, patients. Okay, criteria for organ system failure in pediatrics, infants less than 12 months of age and infants greater than 12 months. Cardiovascular system, we go by system by system, systolic blood pressure less than 40 millimeters of mercury and less than in, in small babies and less than 50 millimeters of mercury in older children. Heart rate would go down as low as 50 or can go up to 20, 220 beats per minute, less than 40 and greater than, it can also be um, greater than uh, 200. In, in children. Uh, cardiac arrest occurs and that usually is the cause of death in these babies. Serum pH would decrease less than 7.2 but have a normal PCO2. Continuous infusion of ionotropic agents would be needed in the respiratory system. Respiratory rate can go above 90 per minute, um, usually, as you know, the highest rate for breathing is about 60, above 60, it is called as tachypnea, and also it could be greater than 70 per minute. PaCO2 uh, will go up because of the lung dysfunction, because of the arms, and PCO2 will go up. Therefore, PaO2 will also drop down less than 40 toll. There is a counter need for mechanical ventilation for greater than 24 hours. PA2 over FIO2 ratio is less than 200. Uh, neurological mm, and in the pediatric OSF, Glasgow coma scale less than five, uh, less than five fixed dilated pupils in the neurological system. Hemoglobin less than 5 grams and hematocrit less than 15%. WBC count drops down in these severe cases less than 3,000, and that was uh, ominous for dying. Platelet count also dropping down less than 20,000, and band to seg ratio elevated greater than 0.4 or 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, and we should calculate that. I think this was described, um, uh, discussed by Dr. Huck also. Um, renal system uh, is failing, and um, BUN can go up to 100, and uh, uh, BUN up to about 40 to 60 still is okay, and serum creatinine will go up uh, to two, and there may be a need for dialysis, dialysis and this was described by Dr. Pollock from Washington, D.C. And then comes all the systems we will go over uh, in neonates. Renal um, system is really the one which goes off first. Renal output decreases in one cc, less than one cc per kilogram per hour. Uh, normally, we should have at least two to four cc's per kilogram per hour, and sometimes it may even go down to half a cc per kilogram per hour. So that's why it's very important to monitor urine output. Serum creatinine will increase to two milligram per dl, and in the neurological system, in neonates, we will see thrombocytopenia, WBC count um, dropping down to even 3,000, and um, 
randomly drops down to 30%. Total bilirubin can be about 4 mg per dl. Um, serum ALT two times the upper limit of hormone. Um, PaO2 will decrease less than 40, and PCO2 will go up above 100, uh, 165. Cardiac, in the cardiac heart rate, less than 100 beats per minute, or maybe tachycardia. Uh, these were described by Dr. Goldstein et al. in 2005. So these are the um, organ environment in babies. Um, then uh, organ system failure, they're, they're, this is due to microvascular injuries. As we know, uh, these babies become generalized edematous, and it is the scleroma, scleroma type hardened edema, uh, which, uh, which was uh, clinically reported a long time ago, and that was considered to be uh, um, um, uh, impending death. Uh, then there is unresponsiveness to protein or plasma infusion, so that is in units. Uh, in the hematological system in units, as I mentioned before, thrombocytopenia, uh, leukopenia, um, spontaneous petechia and purpura, and this due to these uh, um, activated agents, the bone marrow is shut off, or many of these WBCs uh, go into the lungs where the uh, uh, insert starts. The prolonged oozing from puncture sites, when you draw blood, these babies would ooze and hematocrit will drop, and there is always, therefore, a need for blood transfusion. Uh, in the hepatic system, uh, um, uh, rising bilirubin greater than six milligram, and or there could be cholestasis. Both direct and indirect bilirubin will go up. This is because of the liver injury. Uh, Twofold increase in AST and ALT can happen, and serum bilirubin albumin will drop down to less than 2.5 from 4 to 6 milligram per dl. Um, respiratory system, this is again, we are talking about neonates now, need for intubation and mechanical ventilation, a respiratory rate greater than 25 per minute PaO2 will decrease and uh, will, uh, will decrease. Um, and PCO2 will rise, FiO2 0, um, 0 0.4, to maintain PaO2 uh, greater than 50 millimeters of mercury or 50 torr. And there is an association of arts, which we can see. It. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture, but I have another in another slides showing arts as um, failure, pulmonary uh, edema, uh, and uh, chest wall edema. In the cardiovascular system, again, we are doing the neonates, persistent heart rate, less than 100 beats per minute. Um, or, elevated greater than 180 beats per minute, mean, airway, mean arterial pressure less than the fifth percentile for the gestation age. You know, there are the mammograms for blood pressure for premature babies, so we have to look at those and see if it is less than the fifth percentile. Um, in the central nervous system, uh, there is progressive deterioration in the mental status leading to uh, uh, somnolence and these become babies become sleepy um, difficult to awake stupor and finally coma and these were uh, uh, um, uh, published by dr um, samuel smith and mark rowe from pittsburgh ali arangor from is near turkey and trevor duke uh, from Melbourne, Australia in 1997. Okay, then cl clinical paradoxes in M MSOF in the organ that fail first are not directly injured in the initial aspect, uh, insult. It is an indirect impact. There is a lag period of days to weeks between initial insult and development of organ failure. Not all patients with clinical sepsis with MS have microbiological evidence of infection. And this was also discussed 
by previous speakers um, when they said that um, culture negative uh, um, sepsis. And this is, I think, in my thought, this is due to that, it could be due to uh, um, a shock, uh, due to hypothermia, uh, due to other conditions. Um, clearly, okay, more specific septic focus is identified clinically or autopsy in about 30% of the patients dying of clinical sepsis and MSOF. And I think Dr. Hart clearly documented that in his um, elegant presentation. Identification and treatment of superative uh, infections in patients that may not improve the survivor. So uh, even if you have superative infection, uh, may not improve the survival, and they will still lead those, uh, activate those uh, immunological responses. Mortality rate. Mortality rate in SARS um, increases from 30% to 100% if the number of organ failure increases from one to four. So we have to watch each organs which we were talking about. Mortality increases if multiple organ failure occurs. Uh, so, um, uh, what is this? Not directly related to exogenous factors such as bacteria or toxic, but it is largely due to the consequences of hosts on unanogenously produced mediators. They go overboard. First of all, they are trying to protect, then they start damaging the organs. There is an interplay of microbial products and pro-inflammatory mediators, which may be triggered by microorganisms or other factors causing um, tissue insults such as shock, burns, um, hypothermia severe, and acidosis. Biodemical and immunological pathways are activated to control bacterial invasion and to prevent tissue injuries, but they go overboard. This process is activated to control bacterial invasion and to regulate physiological homeostasis. And the activated pathways are endotoxin alteration in kinetics of neutrophils, um, uh, DNF alpha, cytokines, and platelet activating factors. There's complementary coagulation cascade, and telecarine kinase and release of beta endorphins, and we will go over each one separately. A complement system, complement plus phagocytic, uh, phagocytic leukocytes plus antibodies are the cellular and humor, humor arms of immune system. As you know, uh, complement uh, kind of uh, tags on the bacteria and then uh, it shines like a, like a little, like a candle, and then uh, bacteria go ahead and try to attack that. Um, they protect the host from bacterial and fungal infections. Um, the um, com complement system is for homeostasis, but can provoke inflammation and tissue injury also. If the complement system goes overboard, then it can provoke inflammation and tissue injury. Coagulation system, the onset of coagulation disorders and DIC can occur. Um, and infection, shock, hypoxia, and acidosis are postulated as the etiology. And I think this was also discussed before. Mm, and, and this is the cause of uh, DIC and bleeding disorder, which may um, lead to death of these babies. Um, then, and there is an other thing is the production of endorphin. Stress releases endo uh, endogenous opioids, and which can lead to septic shock if the opioids are over released. Endorphin causes cardiovascular depression, vasodilatation, capillary leakage, and hypertension. And we have seen in some of these babies towards the end. Release of endorphin, endorphin is to produce analgesia and decrease 
the pain and anxiety of the patient because during these critical conditions when everything is uh, anxiety and pain and come into being and, and the patients become uncomfortable and maybe um, um, need to be helped. Activation of neutrophils. Neutrophils increase in response to bacterial sepsis or stress, endotoxins, cytokines, especially IL-6 complement and GS GCSF stimulate the production of neutrophils. And I think this was also discussed before. Um, tr um, transient neutropenia may also occur due to trapping of PNNs in capillaries and pulmonary vasculature because that's sometimes the entry of the bacteria through there. Chemotaxis, phagocytosis, and lysis of, is also accentuated. If these physiological responses surpass the host tolerance, the disease progresses and results in multi-organ dysfunction and death. And this is um, the seesaw pendulum down and up. And this is due to uh, activation of mediators, inflammatory and non-inflammatory stimulus such as sepsis, um, shock, um, hypothermia. And uh, then uh, host tolerance is surpassed. The host cannot handle that and then it starts attacking the other organs, such as the lungs, kidneys, and eventually multi-organ failure and leading to death. This is a um, cartoon or a, I have. Um, this was um, from Current Problems in Pediatrics. It's an older article, but maybe uh, you all can look at it. Um, then uh, bacteria, uh, and uh, you know, then it is focal infection, and could be bacteria, which leads to sepsis, and it leads to sepsis syndrome, in which you have uh, changes and acute uh, mental status changes, hypoxemia, plasma, lactate level, oliguria, and then uh, sepsis syndrome plus hypertension or poor capillary refill time that lasts for more than one hour despite IV fluids and pharmacology and requires vasopressor support. Mm. So then on the other side, uh, we got, uh, 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 as I uh, uh, tried to talk a little bit before, clinical evidence of infection, plus uh, there would be um, hy hypothermia or hyperthermia. Uh, hyperthermia, usually we see in term babies, hypothermia we see in premature babies, tachypnea, uh, tachycardia, WBC count, abnormal, and especially elevated band to seg ratio. Um, sepsis syndrome, there is a hypertension or poor capillary refill time that responds promptly to IV fluids uh, and, pharmacologi and pharmacological therapy intervention. Okay. Yeah, there is a poor capillary uh, to fluid therapy, but the, this uh, we have to give inotropic therapy. Uh, any combination of DIC, ARLS, acute renal failure, acute hepatic failure, and acute CNS uh, uh, and depression uh, leads to death. Uh, so management, you know, how should we, we should be very vigilant and looking at these changes and we should attain a hemodynamic stability and tissue oxygenation. Appropriate fluids and electrolyte therapy should be started. Early treatment of shock with fluids and pharmacological agents and enhance oxygen delivery to combat all these negative impact, uh, scenarios. Uh, maintain acid-base balance with safe and gentle mechanical ventilation support when indicated we should not overventilate these babies. Try to keep the PCO2 at least between 45 to 55. Sometimes you can even leave it up to 60. That is called as a permissible 
hypercarbia, which improves the oxygenation. Prompt and appropriate antimicrobial therapy should be initiated as soon as we can. Um, and um, uh, that is very, very important. And we should use the antibiotic therapy according to our um, microorganism results, um, covering both gram positive, gram negative, um, and also sometimes fungal, and, and also viral antimicrobial therapy should be reassessed if there is no response to the initial therapy. The gram negative organism may be uh, uh, resistant to uh, our uh, regular immunoglycosides. Uh, you know, gram positive organism may be resistant, especially if we have um, uh, 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 staph aureus uh, sepsis, um, which is res resistant to, uh, and they may need um, vancomycin at that time. And one of the things which I had encountered was HSV infection. Severe HSV infection, um, uh, as you know, HSV infection presents in three ways. Um, skin and eye and mouth lesions, uh, systemic lesions, and CNS. The systemic one is a general, it's very devastating disease. And which when we were talking affects the lungs, the kidneys, the heart, uh, um, also affects the liver. Liver is the first thing when you have thinking about um, HSV infection, always check the liver function test initially in your initial evaluations. And um, it is a devastating disease. And um, um, babies would die when I had the um, in the misfortune of taking care of these babies. And this is a silent disease, and it is a vertical transmission from maternal in infection, um, in the presence of the infection, and especially if the baby is delivered from the birth canal. Um, I don't know what is the incidence of uh, HSV um, acute infections in, in your population. Um, we do see it um, from time to time. And the prompt treatment with antiviral agent is very, very important, even with skin, eye, and mouth disease. It is um, um, directed to early pathophysiological events. We can use anti endotoxin antibodies, sometimes corticosteroids were um, recommended, naloxin was used, anti IL agents, anti TNF anti-PAF agents, pentoxifiline, and methylxanthine and derivatives. That's why they would recommend uh, theophylline in these babies. Uh, a cyclooxygenase inhibitor, such as inducing ibuprofen and oxin, oxindenac. Antioxidants could use and nitric oxide could be used. And then uh, we had this small retrospective study um, in our hospital. And, and the person sitting at the desk is Dr. Sanjay Akangaya. He is now a famous neurotologist in Kansas City. And he has published several articles on uh, inflammatory response and also serves. And uh, he formed a poster of this study and uh, was uh, uh, submitted to uh, a pediatric academic society meeting. Um, uh, and also, uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, the demographic data for our patients who we thought had surge response, their gestation age, average gestation age was 27 weeks, but we had a range of 23 to 39 weeks range. Range. The background, ethnic background, uh, 10 patients out of these were uh, Caucasian, um, four African-American, and 10 Hispanic population. Route of delivery, there were nine vaginal deliveries and 15 C-section deliveries. Um, so uh, that is the case. Gender, there were 16 males 
and as you know, eight females. And females do better in all aspects of neurological problems. Birth weight was, average was uh, uh, 1,058 grams and ranged from 515 to 3.7 kilograms. Post conception age at the time of death, average was 29 weeks, but it ranged from 25 to 41 weeks gestation because in that higher upper range, there was a baby who died of HSV infection. And the day of life at death was 22 days average, and it ranged from seven to 54 days, and mortality in these cases of about 50%. Okay, then we looked at uh, um, organ system, day of life failure, microvascular changes uh, occurred on day of life three. This is the capillary leakage syndrome, hematological uh, abnormalities were seen at day of life feed with a range of five to 13 days and hypertension occurred around day of life seven with a range of one to 13 days. Renal uh, average was, uh, range was 12 days, but it also started early, one to 45 days. Hepatic um, involvement in occurred around day 14, but also ranged from one to 42 days. That's why it's very important to check the liver functions, especially when you are dealing and worried about the HSV infection. Respiratory, uh, day of life 15, and also range from 1 to 38 days. Cardiovascular, uh, day of life 21, and range from 1 to 4. So cardiovascular heart was the last thing to go in, in, as, as this surge response in your limbs. Um, so the other authors, also Dr. Ivan Bullion, uh, they uh, say uh, um, the first thing they lost was the renal function, second one was microvascular, third was hematological, hepatic, respiratory, and cardiac. Um, in Dr. Smith, micro, microvascular was the first thing, then the renal, hepatic, hematological, respiratory, and cardiac. In, uh, in, the, in the small study, which we did is the observational study, um, we saw that microvascular changes was the first thing, hematological, hypertension, renal involvement, hepatic, respiratory, and cardiac. Cardiac was always the last one in all studies. And in the adult population, same thing, respiratory, hepatic, GI, renal, hematological, and cardiac. These are the microorganisms which cause cells in our um, setting. And in those days, uh, we had a very high incidence of uh, fungal infections. And the reason being, we were using TPN for a long period of time. We were not feeding babies early, and there were uh, antibiotics, third generation cephalosporins were used. So at that time, we had very high incidence of candida. After we changed all that, we hardly see fungal infections anymore. We started feeding early use of mother's milk and uh, cutting down the need for TPN and cutting down um, the IV uh, access and try to get the IVs out. Then the second, uh, we had uh, uh, Pseudomonas aeroginosa and this was the early onset sepsis of Pseudomonas which I saw and um, this baby died and it was reported as a case report by one of our residents. Residents. Herpes simplex, and the baby I mentioned, also died, and herpes simplex uh, type 2 was um, proven by the PCR, um, and this was the multiple organ failure. And there was a Klebsiella pneumonia, as we mentioned, Klebsiella pneumonia is more common in the um, developing nation, but it is also seen in the uh, um, in the developed nations also. Um, staff holiness and E. coli, um, which um, uh, 
and uh, Dr. Huck is always had been worried about um, that we increase the risk of E. coli sepsis if we use ampicillin early. Uh, staph voluntary and cloacy, uh, and we also have one case of staph aureus, which presented as SIRS. Um, so what are the early markers for early detection of impending MRS immunities? First of all, follow the human output. And that is a simple calculation. We should calculate FEMA. It should not go more than 2.5. Uh, FEMA is urine sodium divided uh, divide by serum sodium divided by urine creatinine, creatinine divided by serum creatinine times 100. Serum and urine nitrates. Serum lactate is also very important now. It is one of the early markers. And we can use CRP and procalcitonin. Uh, we should also, uh, in the baby with HSV infection, be monitored and IL-6 was very, very high. PAF, anti-NF alpha could be monitored. Um, so, um, MSRF accounts for majority of deaths in critical ill adults, and this has been well studied. And must have been recognized in new names, and the pattern of presentation and outcome is somewhat similar, but also different in some ways from the adult patient. Sepsis is considered to be one of the key factors related to the pathogenesis of MRS. However, this syndrome can be triggered with normal infectious incels, as we, um, it was discussed um, um, during Dr. Huck's uh, lecture, where uh, it could be due to um, hypothermia, septic, uh, other conditions, shock, burns, and so on. Um, um, and at that time, your blood culture will be negative, but the babies will have all signs and symptoms of sepsis. Cells um, 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 of are based upon the concept of an excessive systemic activation of an immune system. It surpasses and resulting in the injury multiple. They start attacking the other organs, such as kidneys, lungs, liver, um, um, neurological system. And you remember the, uh, the, the seesaw picture I saw you, the pendulum swings higher and goes away and, and, and try to protect the baby, but then it goes overboard and try to and damage the organs. The initial signs of SIRS and MODS are subtle, and the infant only whispers or maybe whimper. And the onset of MODS for a period of time prior to shouting its occurrence by cardiovascular compromise, respiratory failure, and impending death. Initially, these babies may be moaning, groaning, and um, several changes, but then suddenly they go downhill. Oliguria, increased FEMA, unexplained weight gain, worsening soft tissue edema, increased bilirubin, and rise in serum urine nitrates are the earliest parameters of impending multiple organ failure. Um, the current goal of treatment of MSF is to recognize and reverse the systemic inflammatory response prior to occurrence the permanent organ damage and death. These are some of my references. And the, I think one thing I didn't mention in the update is the current infection and COVID-19 also presents as SARS and the SARS viral infection. So there is a lot of talk about that. And that's why they were saying the lungs are affected, the heart is affected, and impending death can occur. And this is also an inflammatory response to COVID-19 and the SARS virus. Um, these are...